Hey, Run Junkies, welcome to Runners Without Limits. I'm Coach Heather, and this is a very special episode 182 for the weekend of December 23rd, 2022. We are recording this on Monday, December 19th, because Jen, we've got a Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend digital event guide. I don't know why they have to make this so wordy, but here we are. <laughs> they make it wordy and I think they try and make it mobile friendly, but in turn, they just make it more complicated than it yes. has been previous year. You know, since they've gone to this format, it's like, seriously, oh wait, no, I need to click this hidden link and then... <sighs> deep breath. Yes. Deep I know breath. exactly. Deep breath. Um, here's the thing, you guys. Uh, and I want to thank our podcast Facebook group and our, our community because they dropped this guide later than I was hoping they would. And I just didn't get to doing the course map breakdown and the digital guide breakdown like I have in the past. Um, I actually recorded the screen captures of the guide breakdown on Sunday night and knowing how long these things take to edit, I decided, no, I need to take another approach because really I'm just a broken record on these things. Jen, you've seen these a bunch of times, you know, yep. that they're with very few exceptions, they're almost identical yep. from year to year. They really are. And honestly, the past week before the guy dropped, I was going back and binging some of your old ones because mm -hmm. I'm trying to get in the mood, trying to kind of mentally prepare all of that. And I knew that there weren't going to be a ton of major changes. I, I yeah. think there are some here and there, and we'll talk about them today. But, you know, quite frankly, it's it's a lot of the same stuff. And then the rest is just a fun surprise. Yeah, exactly. And here's what we're going to do a little differently uh, this time around. The podcast is really just going to be what it is. I just have to remember that we're also recording video. Because... Yes. <laughs> and like, Instead I of thought, sitting here and like... And pick in my nose or whatever. <laughs> and I have two screens, like my camera's in the middle. I've got, you and I have all these different screens, I think, on our computers to yeah. reference all this. So for those watching on video, mm -hmm. we are not ignoring you. We're just looking at all these different things. It's like, where do I exactly. look? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. For the first time in a long time, I've actually put makeup on for a podcast. So here we, here we are. So yeah. this one is going to look a little different. It is going to be more like a breakdown of the breakdowns, because if you followed me over on YouTube for a while, um, the most tedious and difficult videos I do, but the ones that are most beloved by you guys um, are the digital guide breakdowns, specifically the course map breakdowns. With the 2022 Marathon Weekend uh, Digital Event Guide, we actually don't have a lot of changes. So it we're kind of just going to break down what those changes would be. Um, if you want to see a pretty accurate representation of what the 2023 Marathon Weekend courses are going to be, um, the 2022, and I'm going to leave links to all of this in the description in the show notes. Um, the 2022 marathon weekend, 5k half marathon and marathon are very, very similar. Uh, the 10k is not. However, if you go to the springtime surprise course map breakdown, you will see that course. And this 10k was broken down or this 10k course for the 23 races uh, was back, I think we did this in probably 2022 or 2019 was the last time I did the 10. Definitely did years. it in 2019 because I remember I did that one with um, my cousin and I, I vividly remember running around Crescent Lake in, in mm -hmm. that aspect. So mm -hmm. um, it, it's kind of a throwback in a way, given the theme of Marathon Weekend It is this 90s throwback, but it's it's kind of this throwback to other 10Ks that they've done in the past. Right. And really, Run Disney can only do so much wiggling around with their courses. They're, they're pretty standard when it comes yeah. to each of the different courses. The 5K almost never changes when it starts and finishes in Epcot, um, for example. So for the most part, with very few changes, and we're going to point those changes out today in the courses. Um, yeah. They're they're pretty similar to what you will have seen in the past. Bottom line is, guys, you you're just gonna go where you're told to go. <laughs> so <laughs> unless you are leading the pack, 
you were, and even then, if you're, if you're the first one out there, there's going to be a bike. There's going to be a car. Yeah. There's going to be something out there telling you where to go. There's plenty of signage, especially for those that have never done these races before. Mm -hmm. There's so much signage that it's pretty well lit, except in a few places here and there. But for the most part, like there's going to be no confusion, but I know many of you are like me where you like to visualize. Yeah. You like to mentally process what is it? What is, what are those chunks? Where are we going? What is the elevation? What are some of the things that I need to mentally prepare to set myself up for success? And right. I get that because I'm that way. Right. No, absolutely. And we do want to point out like kind of the highlights of all of this. Yes. One thing too, that I, I know I don't have to apologize for because it's, it has nothing to do with me, but the guides get worse every year. Run Disney, if you're listening, this is this is getting ridiculous. They clearly did not look at the color scheme for the marathon course map. If you are colorblind, red, green, colorblind, you won't see this. And no. it is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so I, and that was one of the reasons why it was so hard for me. It was hard for me to even look at this when I did, when I did the screen grab breakdown, um, I had to start over. It, it took me 45 minutes just to do the marathon guys. It, it's ridiculous. So please, please, please go back to the old guides, take a look at what this has looked like in the past. You're going to get a really good idea. Um, but you'll see kind of how things are going to be similar here. If you're watching this on video, um, the hope is <laughs> that I will have screen grabs and of the maps and such that you'll be able to see uh, sort of pointing out some of the changes. But um, if you're listening to this on the regular podcast feed, you know, we'll have maps and there, you know, we've talked about it a little bit in the podcast, Facebook group. We do want to thank our podcast, Facebook group and those over on the runners without limits main page. Um, you guys have asked some really, really good questions. We will have a midweek moments coming up. Um, I think on the 28th, yes, on the 28th after Christmas, um, where we are going to kind of go through a lot of the questions that you've brought up here. So if you don't yeah. hear your question answered, please come back on Wednesday um, for more, more of that. And you'll have it, you'll still have a few days to kind of prepare and think through a couple of things. Um, we know that we're kind of coming down to it. Um, I will also say quickly too, is we know that there are some gaps and discrepancies in the guide. There always are, you know, proofreading and, and editing something like this is, is such a huge undertaking. Um, you know, I was reading Farron's letter again this morning and they called the Goofies race and a half challenge a 19.3 mile yeah. challenge. Yeah. It's not, you yeah. know, just little things like that, that we notice, um, you know, there's a lack of details around spectating, for example, the um, marathon outside of the start and finish, you know, so there's a lot of questions left there. So yeah. uh, oftentimes what we have seen them do is folks might email run Disney with questions and they'll update mm -hmm. the guide. So study this, but check back. And what I would just say to all our listeners, all our viewers here is if you see updates, flag it in the podcast, Facebook group so that sure. everyone knows that there are updates and we can help each other out with those things. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, I know, look, I, a hundred years ago, I worked in the marketing department for an opera company and I was in charge of putting together their playbill every year. The amount of detail that goes into something like this, the amount of proofreading, and this isn't even printed, it's it's digital, but just the amount of work that goes into writing the copy on this kind of stuff. Um, I'm willing to give them some grace. The only problem that I have is the color scheme that they chose. Frankly, anyway, just makes me want to barf because I can't stand this these color scheme. It's just too... Oh, it's too much, too much neon for me. Um, but really, this is, neon. it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. please no. <laughs> it doesn't work in a lot of these, like there needs to be a balance of the yeah. neon and actual readability. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. The reason we moved away from these colors from in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of, you mentioned a Farron Kelly's letter. I have to say, if you want to chuckle, read his letter yes. and dude, 
Farron Kelly, I know you're probably not listening or watching this, but um, I, I, it, well done on the throwback picture because that was hilarious. I'm kind of wondering, like, if I were to find a picture of me from 1994, what would I find? Well, and as someone in PR and executive communications, someone wrote this for him. Well, for I'll, sure. I'll spoil, I'll spoil that for right, everyone. Right. But yeah, it is like it is well played out in that mm -hmm. and it, I think yeah. it just sets the stage and and just makes you smile so I love little things like that and yeah. that's honestly that's what sets run Disney apart from other races yes absolutely all right Jen let's get into kind of breaking all of this down but I want to start with the most notable changes from previous events in previous sure. years um, I think the biggest one that you would probably agree with me here would be the virtual queue system, which is Expo yep. Day One. All right, yes. um, because uh, that that was thrown at us late in the game before Wine and Dine. But wh why don't you kind of explain what this is a little bit? Yeah. So the virtual queue is a system where you log in and they change the time and I have to go back and look at the time. You log in to your My Disney Experience app. 8.30. 8.30 now. I, I was like, was it eight or 8.30? So you log in at 8.30 to enter this virtual queue, similar, similar to the way you would for um, Guardian's Mission Breakout or some of the rides that they've done in the past. You select your parties, however many people are in your party, and you enter the queue and it will give you a time to return and enter. Now, we they experienced this the first time in for Wine and Dine. That had maybe a third, a quarter of the people that we are expecting for Marathon Weekend. So I think it was a test of what happened and what we saw were people were given times, you know, boarding groups almost or- uh, yeah. And There's like, like a number system. A yeah. number, a number system where that is your queue number. And you can go in when that queue number has been called. What we saw during Wine and Dine was people with some later numbers kind of kept getting pushed back a little bit here and there. And, and but that happens for boarding groups for the rides as well as, as they get pushed back. It's it's common. By the time it was about three o'clock or so on the first day of Wine and Dine, and the virtual queue is only for day one. Yeah. And it is just for the merchandise, the Run Disney official merchandise. Yeah. We should clarify all of that. Yes. It's it not about not bibs or t-shirts. Right. And that's no. exactly right. Yes. So then by about three o'clock on the first day, they basically had gone through everyone in the virtual queue and you could walk up and go in again quarter of the people or so that will be there for marathon weekend we don't know what it's going to be like with more people especially everyone doing dopey and the 5k that need to be there that monday not monday that wednesday it is monday today what is i don't know is it okay no, it's monday when we're recording this um so that's the virtual queue system you need the my disney experience app in order to go in yeah. and and sign in, but you can get kind of your group of people together for it. Yeah. And again, go back to the guide itself in, and I'm going to kind of show you on screen here, what that looks like, the virtual queue process, and it mm -hmm. gives you all of the details. All right. Yeah. One thing that you, if you are club run Disney, and I know there's a very small handful of you out there listening that are, this does not apply to you because you do have that, um, that the platinum level has the lounge and you have the early yes. access and so on and so forth. So gold and platinum club run Disney members don't have to deal with this. However, yes. there are a lot of details on how this works. If you've never used the virtual queue system or lightning lane or anything like that, um, it's definitely there. It's it there. It's just a long kind of instruction list. It's yeah. not hard. It's just, wait, how do I do this? And it's a very step-by-step -step kind of process. That is for only day one on Wednesday, the 4th, and um, only for the Run Disney merchandise store. Yes. I Thank think you. one caveat, too, is if you're flying in that day, you need to be within, what is it, a 45, 50-mile radius mm -hmm. of 
Walt Disney World. So if you are in the air flying down when it opens at 8.30 in the morning, and I do think that it was 7 a.m., they moved it to 8.30. I think that will help some people fly in a little bit more. Um, but that's also where if you have people that can, you can kind of link your My Disney experience and they can kind of get you in there as well. You can mm -hmm. generally get it. They can help get you in there, but it is, it's a little different. It's yeah. different. We'll see how it works for Marathon Weekend. We shall see. Yeah. yeah. And I, I will put this out there now. Be nice to the cast members that are managing the virtual queue. They didn't come up with this. They weren't the ones that put this in place. Be nice to them, please. Yes. We did discuss this in our expo, uh, kind of expo and hall breakdown on the podcast here for Wine yes. and Dine. And we did talk to a couple of people on that podcast. I'll leave a link to that in the show notes. Um, there's going to be a lot. You guys can kind of go back and do a lot of research. I've done so many of these that there's so much information out there mm -hmm. um, that you guys can find it somewhere. And it's a, a, everything you really need to know is in the yep. guide. It's just, where, how do you find it? Okay. Yeah. So I think um, let's move on to another thing that will be kind of important to think about if you haven't already seen this. It's not a new thing, but it is new enough that a lot of people who haven't done Run Disney in the last couple of years may not know about. It's called the Expo Check-in Pass. Yes. So digital waivers have gone well, waivers have gone electronic. So you don't have to print you don't have to print out a paper waiver to bring with you on a uh, bid pickup day. So what you do is you go into your run Disney account. All right. And you have to sign your digital waiver. You should have, if you go into your, your account, it'll say view your registration and it'll have your documents. Sometimes it will have a, a little sign that says you have documents that need to be reviewed. That just means that you have to sign your digital waiver. Yes. Um, once that is signed, you do need that to pick up your bib, which means you're gonna need your expo check-in pass, which you get after you sign your waiver. The expo check-in pass is just a, instead of having all this legalese to bring with you, it's just your name, um, what you end up having your bib number, uh, what your bib number is, um, your address, I believe, and contact information, and then your t-shirt size. So just kind of sort of the pertinent information that you need on that day. That is going to come through on December 31st. Go back into your Run Disney account and you'll see your Expo check-in pass. From there, all you have to do is take a screenshot. Actually, Go ahead. Real quick, you can add it to Apple Wallet. And I pulled yes. up my old one here and you can simply see yeah. It's pretty basic. Yeah, there's not much. This to is it. all. It, it really just has your name, the category, the race you're running, and your date of birth, and mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, and that is how that is what you bring to bib pickup to, uh, and they'll give you your bib, and that's all they need, and then you sign a little document, and you're off and on your way. So yep. that is the sort of the new system. I think it makes it a little bit easier for the volunteers who have to look at, you know, a thousand of these every day. So um, that is the new system. When in doubt, check your Run Disney account online, okay? If um, you register it someone else, it will have you email their email to them to sign for, for the person to sign their own digital waiver. You can't sign it for someone else unless they're a minor. If right. you have any issues, guest services on site can help you. I know yeah. sometimes there have been issues with them disappearing, all these issues. Don't freak out. Just go to Runner Relations and they'll be more than happy to help you. Right. Um, so I think that's that covers sort of changes at the expo. Let's talk about the most major changes yes. with the courses. Um, I'm not going to go blow by blow, turn by turn through all of it. There's no reason to, because like I said, you can go back and look at a couple of other events. Mm -hmm. 5k is going to be similar to almost every other 5k they've ever done. 10k we discussed the half marathon once again, goes from Epcot to magic kingdom and back. Um, that is very similar to what it has been in the past. Um, 
I want to kind of pause on that for a second, Jen, because you and I stayed up at the Magic Kingdom Resorts and we're kind of surprised actually, because there's a lot of construction uh, coming out of the, coming out of Magic Kingdom as on the turn back south. There is a lot of construction there. I mean, we haven't been since early November. We don't know mm -hmm. the progress that they've made. It could be, you know, they might've been moving fast. Uh, you know, trying to figure out how they would take other people and the impact to park guests. Mm -hmm. You know, I, thinking about this a little bit once the courses, cur courses were released was if they had to bring us through the um, the TTC, the Transportation Ticket Center there, um, you know, that blocks in kind of blocking that out instead of on the roads where they are still taking us. You know, that's all the parking and getting parking away from Magic Kingdom right after the new year, where it's going to be pretty busy, was probably not the best way to for, for them to take us. So it's going to make, they're making it work. I would just make note of all of that because that might mean spectating, if any spectators, if you're driving from that area, all of that stuff might be a little tricky with road closures. So just be prepared and when in doubt, ask both at Run Disney and your resort. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, real quick, go back. I just thought as we were talking, uh, what I've done in the past with the breakdowns is I've given you sort of my preference for how to approach um, the expo and which building to visit first. So yes. I usually say, go to the Run Disney merchandise store first, then pick up your bib, then go to the Visa Athletic Center. Obviously with the virtual queue on the first day, uh, that kind of goes out the window, but that's usually how I would do it is go to the, the merchandise store first, go to the State Farm field house to pick up your bib because you need your bib to pick up your t-shirts in the Visa Athletic Center, uh, unless you're dopey. If you're dopey, you pick all of that stuff up in the State Farm field house. So with the virtual queue system in line on day one, you still have to go to the State Farm field house first to pick up your bib, then go over to Visa Athletic Center if you are anything but dopey to pick up uh, your t-shirts. And those t-shirts are at the all the way at the back of the hall. So that was just my little quick go back. Yeah. And there were lines to pick up bibs for the first time in as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, it moved fast from what we heard. So don't be discouraged by that. But yeah, you know, just be prepared that there might be a little bit more queuing mm -hmm. than you are used to for the expo. Yeah. And if just to keep in mind, if you well, let's say it this way. You must pick up your bib the day before your first, no later than the day before your first event. So if you yeah. are dopey or 5K, you have to pick up your bib on Wednesday. Um, if you're 10K, you might wait until Thursday, but no later than Thursday. So that's just sort of the, if you're goofy, you might wait until Friday. Uh, so just, you know, keep that in mind that that is, that's kind of a hard and fast rule. So the day before you need to be on site picking up your bib, check yeah. out the digital event guide because it's got the hours and they're not, they're not open all day through the whole weekend. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, let's go back and move on to a couple of other course changes that we've seen. Um, the marathon, yes. most notably this year, uh, a lot of people have pointed this out and it's kind of exciting. Just a slight little alteration in the course, but after you come out of the castle in Magic Kingdom, instead of turning up through, I think it, it's, it's Liberty Square, you're coming down through Adventureland. So you're going to yes. go past the Jungle Cruise and um, uh, Magic Carpets and Pirates and all of that stuff. And in my memory, I don't ever remember going through there. I don't either. I really don't remember going through there. I I'll, I'll say, it. don't tell anyone, folks, that is my favorite bathroom to use on course <laughs> because it's huge right there in Adventureland and it goes back. Don't tell anyone beyond this group. Don't but I don't think tell so anybody. many people wait to go, like they try and go to one of the first few bathrooms mm -hmm. in Magic Kingdom and before they go through the castle 
and not as many people go there. So yeah, I mean, I'm excited for that little change. Yeah. The other, the other one too, that um, if you did Marathon Weekend 2020 and not 2021, 2022, because there wasn't a 2021. Right. Um, 2020 went through Blizzard Beach. Right. 2022 went through the Blizzard Beach parking lot. They did not go all the way into Blizzard Beach. They did not go all the way through. It is still doing a nice detailed tour of the Blizzard Beach parking lot. You get to see every inch of the Blizzard Beach parking lot, you guys. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> and no, you don't get to go through Wide World of Sports and ESPN. And we haven't done that for a few years. I think 2019 was the last year. I didn't do the marathon that year. I know the last time I yeah. did it was 2018. Um, yeah. That was the time when they were actually uh, doing construction on that interchange. Um, I can't yeah. remember the name of the roads now, but going into, there's a sort of a flyover ramp now into ESPN from the west side that uh, where it used to be just a four-way stop. So they kind of had to change that. Uh, so we're not going through ESPN anymore. Um, it used to be we would just do like a clover leaf loop all the way around yeah. ESPN, but instead they had to kind of make things up. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's interesting because I still see this question come up and it's been a few yeah. years, but I, I mean, it makes sense guys. Jen and I do these events, multiple events every year. and you know, between the, the two of us, we do four or five of these every year, maybe more. So we've seen this a hundred times. Um, we don't want to assume that you, you, dear listener, dear viewer, have seen this in the last year. Yeah. Right. So because things do change slightly, that is a big change, you know, taking ESPN out and going through Blizzard Beach. Um, because what happens now is that you go, you leave Epcot, you go up to Magic Kingdom, you come back down to Animal Kingdom. You do a loop in and out of Animal Kingdom, and then you're kind of backtracking. Um, yes. You go past Coronado Springs to the Blizzard Beach parking lot, and then up past Col Coronado Springs again, uh, out to Hollywood Studios. Sorry, I was blanking on that for a second. Hollywood Studios, and then the course as as usual again i the 2020 event very similar with the exception of taking blizzard beach out so i will say they got rid of some of the switchback they they they've historically also had this switchback in between magic kingdom and animal kingdom mm -hmm. instead of going down towards es when you left animal kingdom you you would go out a different way as you just described so to make up some distance with the shift, you would have a switchback in between there, kind of right around the wastewater treatment center, which is a great motivator to keep moving Just and and going to past stop. that. <laughs> um, so that switchback, which I actually saw a lot of people cutting the course there in in past years, um, that is no longer as well. If it's been a little while since you've done it, um, I'm trying to remember. They might have done that in 2020. Um, but yes, so that switchback is gone. One thing before we move on to kind of your best practices here uh, that I'm not going to cover in any of this uh, is for the first time in my memory, the Castaway Key Challenge is detailed on the yeah. Run Disney Digital Guide. If you are doing that, there's a special booth for that. So jump in there and get your information. I know that the number of people listening to this are probably very few who are doing that. But if you're doing the Castaway Key Challenge, um, definitely check that out. Now, if you don't know what that is, that is a 5K uh, on the Disney Cruise that takes you out to um, Castaway Key. And then you do a 5K. There's an actual race set up. And this is the first time that they've brought it back since the pandemic started. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, it's exciting. It was, it's on my bucket list. I was going to do it this year, but I'm like, nope, too much going. On. It's a lot. It is a lot. A they lot. do the 5k every cruise that stops at Castaway Key, but this yeah. is a special one and a special challenge medal tied to marathon weekend. Right. 
Right. And it, and again, it's um, they took the actual race away for a while, yeah. but now the race is back. So the, yep. the actual start and finish line, and they actually make a big deal on a specific day for this. Yeah. So, so let's move on sort of our best tips and practices from two run Disney veterans who've been doing this for an ungodly number of years. <laughs> And I mean, we could spend the entire day doing this, but we won't. And that's why we're going to have a follow. We've already done one run Disney specific midweek moments, and we'll do another one specific to marathon weekend as well with a lot of the questions that have been asked in the podcast Facebook group. I have also, and I know a lot of you as well, have been answering some of them in there because it is time sensitive. So we're, we're working on that. Ask your questions in there if we don't cover it, but know that even more is coming for you. Yeah. So much information. And again, use that podcast, Facebook as a Facebook group, our runners without limits group as a resource. Um, not only do you have Jen and I who are veterans of this event, but folks who have been doing this for years as well, they have their own experiences. They do it a little bit differently, or maybe they, they look at all of this a little differently guys. Yeah, we may have a lot of experience, but that doesn't make us the end all be all authority. There are so many other ways that you can do this. This is just what we're going to bring you here are sort of our takeaways from past events and why we do what we do. Uh, Well, there is a why behind what we do. And um, just because we do it this way doesn't mean you have to. It's just sort of best practices to get through the weekend, especially if you're doing anything involving the marathon, but goofy and dopey specifically, because it is, it's a Disney trip, they're early mornings and it's a lot. So, um, I think my first tip, Jen, if you want to elaborate on this, is just don't, don't over plan. Yeah. And I think it's so easy. Oh, I want to make sure I have this and that booked and I want to, you know, we have parks booked every day. We have dining, but not every day. We've And we've got several options and we have kind of contingency plans all because, you know, we don't know how we're going to feel. Mm-hmm. We don't know what the weather is going to be like. And I'll get into that. Um, you know, I think you really, really, really need to just listen to your body It is, especially if you've been doing this for a little bit and you have a lot of friends going, if you've got a lot of stuff, it's okay to say no. Right. Yes. It's okay to change your plans. No is a full sentence. And if someone, if you have plans with other folks and they pass, don't give them a hard time. Don't, don't, don't be that person that's, that makes them feel bad for listening to their body. Mm. You know, rent Disney, Disney is going to be there. Yeah, exactly. I want to come back. And I think, I think the thing that is hard to remember and cert- I mean, I'm, I'm saying this from personal experience. It's hard to remember that this is actually an athletic event. Um, and if you were to do this kind of thing anywhere else in the world, you would treat it differently fact that it's Disney adds an element of complexity to it that we don't always take into account. So yeah, don't over plan and be flexible in the plans that you do make. Because if you just decide, and I know, you know, I think Disney has been a lot better about last minute, like dining cancellations and things like that. Uh, yeah. than they have been in the past. It used to be you had to give like 24 hours or something like that. They've oh, been much better at that. Go talk to like the front desk at your hotel, concierge, anything like that. And they can help cancel within that window, usually with no problems. Just mm-hmm. let them know that, hey, you're not feeling well or something like this and you need to rest and, and you're right. fine. I know you and I also have several pl- like pl- quote plans where it involves grabbing takeout and bringing yeah. it back to the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, that, that and is our- yeah. And, and especially like the thing is you and I have, we we're going to have a villa and we're going to have a kitchen and all of this stuff. So taking that into account, it's like, that makes things so much easier. Yeah. Uh, except that I don't want to cook while I'm vacation. 
<laughs> yeah. And like, I don't plan on cooking a ton overall, but to have a microwave, to have an oven, if, yeah. if we get pizza or something like that, or that we simply just want to reheat it yeah. and, and reheat something, if we go get blaze or if we get, yeah. you know, something, you know, big pasta or something that is way too much food for anyone to eat that we can reheat easily, for example, like those are all nice things to have. If you get, you can always get two orders of Mickey waffles and toast them up in the morning. I haven't had uh -oh, a lot of breakfast yet. Just, just got, <laughs> she's like, ooh, plotting. Oh, well. um, yeah, so just again, going back, just uh, don't don't over plan. It's, it's really easy, especially, and I think if you're bringing your family, um, this is something to start talking about before you go. Just yeah. say, look, I have these races and this is what's expected. This is what I, I need to do to take care of myself. Um, if you need to communicate with your family, hey, go to the parks, have fun. I will join you later or I'll, I'll join you for a little bit. Then I'm going to go back to the room. You guys can kind of discuss how you're going to do all yeah. of that. But I know, you know, to get your quote unquote money's worth out of a park day ticket, um, you kind of don't want to leave the park to go back and, and, and take a break. Um, so just kind of start thinking about that. And this kind of dovetails into the next point that we want to make. Go One ahead. more quick point there is these races are so close to the new year that a lot of people are still going to be on break. The parks are going to be very crowded. That means lines are going to be long. Yeah. If you get, which means a lot of standing on your feet when you're in some of those queues for some mm -hmm. of those rides, that time on your feet has an impact on yeah. what it is, how you feel, your recovery, all of that, which I think plays into the next point that you're going to make. Yeah. Standing around on, you know, being on your feet takes a different kind of toll than running a marathon. So if you're running if you're running, you've trained to run, you've trained to yeah. move forward for a very long period of time. We haven't necessarily trained to stand around in addition to all of that running, unless you have a, you know, a job where you're on your feet a lot, you, you probably haven't done a lot of just standing and moving very slowly in lines or strolling around all day. Yeah. So here's the thing you spend far more time on your feet than you actually might realize. So here's an example, my half marathon day for wine and dine clocked a total of 23 miles, right? Same. That's 10 more well. miles than the race day. Okay. Same. Across five days, I clocked over 62 miles. That's an average of 12 miles per day. So Glada from our, um, uh, Facebook group. She's, she said, I thought people were exaggerating, but she's, she's like, Oh no, no, that's true. It's true. You mm -hmm. will do two miles or more of walking before you even cross the start line for the half of the full marathons. Yeah. All right. That's just before you even start. So just remember that by the, especially if you're doing dopey, I think this is the thing that has been my biggest takeaway and how I kind of think about my training is by the time you get to the marathon, before you even start running, your feet are just so sore. They're just sore, okay? And yes. it's normal because you're spending a lot of time on your feet and you've been doing a lot of running already. Um, just keep that in mind. It's not, there's not a whole lot you can do about it with the exception of taking those breaks midday, going to bed early, don't over plan. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of time on your feet. And I think that's where making sure you get to the races early can really help so that you're not running to the start because this has been true the past few years where you actually cross over the marathon yes. course to get to the corrals for the marathon. So you have to be there and they have to block that roadway for you to get there. You don't want to be running to then get into the corrals and, and go and not get settled. So really give yourself plenty of time for both the half and the full, but especially the full. We saw in 2020, there were bus issues, things were gridlocked. 
race started yeah. late for a lot of for that and people were trying to get there and it was a it was it was a lot yeah give yourself time and I kind of want to go to a question that Phil asked in in the podcast Facebook group uh he asked when should I arrive for the half marathon full marathon look the half isn't as big of a deal because you don't have that um, the way the course loops on the marathon is what we're going to get to doesn't happen during the half marathon. Yeah. Um, I personally wouldn't wait until the last minute. A lot of people are like, well, I'm not going to, I'm going to wait until, you know, the very last second to get there. Um, okay. That's fine. But if you do that on marathon day, everyone else, 50,000 people are waiting on you. 25,000 people are waiting on you. Okay. So for the yep. full marathon, it is very important. If you go into the digital event guide, you will see the walkout for the half and full marathons. You'll see what has to happen. In the middle of that walkout is how the marathon actually crosses back over that, okay? So they have to shut down that section of road of that walkout before they can start the race. Yep. Well, why? Because the the chairs and the, the wheeled athletes will be through their five, 10 minutes after they start, which and they start first. The elites will be through there in 15 minutes. Okay. So you might be sitting in your corral for a while, but the bottom line is that they're going to be through there so fast that they have to get everybody out of the way. So for the full marathon, it's extremely important to arrive as early as possible um, because of that course layout. The buses in Monorail start running at 2.30. If you are staying in a Magic Kingdom resort, according to the digital guide, you have to take the monorail. I don't know if that is true. If anybody has ever stayed at a Magic Kingdom resort, um, let me know if that is... I did. So I stayed... I stayed... Um, my first marathon in 2018, I stayed at Grand Flow okay. and I had to take the monorail there. Yeah. I was on the monorail going back from the marathon because that was my only choice as well. And it broke down. So I had to get off and then take a bus. Okay. Yeah. So I don't love the monorail and those resorts personally, given my, that experience, you know, after running a marathon and all of that and just transportation issues. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that was my only option that morning. Yeah. So keep that in mind. So buses and monorails start running at two 30, maybe earlier. If buses are full, they'll, they'll just start sending them off. So if, if the bus is full by two 15, you're on your way to, to the start line, um, suggested arrival time. I was trying to find this somewhere, but I can't, um, I want to say that for the half and full marathon, they want you there no later than four o'clock. Yeah. Maybe even 3.30. It um, might be 3.30 for the full. I'd have yeah. to go back and look. Um, yeah. But I would say four is the absolute latest for the half. I would not get there any later than 3.30 for the full. Yeah. And we're not trying to be like anal retentive, obsessive compulsive jerks about this, okay? This is literally the full marathon everybody has to be in place before they can start the thing. And, and again, everyone, if you decide that you want to wait, you might either miss your start. And I don't know how they manage that or you're holding up the race. So just, you know, keep everybody in mind and the whole big picture in mind here, because there's so many people that they have to pump through this course. All well, right, that's a two mile walk. That's about 35, 40 minutes of just mm -hmm. walking. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a lot guys. It's a lot. All right. So let's move on to, it's a really good question, Phil. Thank you so much for asking this. Um, I want to move on to, because we're spending so much time on our feet, uh, shoes. Let's talk shoes. You need an entire suitcase just for shoes. Or not. <laughs> I see nothing wrong with it. That's well. And here's the thing especially if you're doing one of the challenges, if you're doing multiple races and here's the other piece is you and I have been there when it's been pouring rain. We, you know, you were there when they had to cancel the half because of a thunderstorm. So what happens if your shoes get wet, mm -hmm. you need good recovery shoes. 
you need for walking around. You need your race shoes, which should not be the same as what you use for walking around the parks. Right. You need a good number of shoes. And I will tell you, it is absolutely worth the price of checking two bags. Yes. Personal opinion here that, you know, maybe what does that cost you? 70 bucks or something like that, depending on the airline. Okay. Well, if all of a sudden a cold front blows through or a warm front blows through and you need to go buy new clothes, how much money is that costing you? Right. Right. I think of it like an insurance policy of having yeah. multiple pairs. And I always like to have everything I need for my first, at least one race, if not two races in my carry on. Yeah. Uh, and anything you can't really live without, you yes. know, like you mentioned contact lenses that yes. if, you know, I wouldn't check those, put no, those in your yeah. carry on. Um, just because, you know, and it seems like I, I didn't even think about this until you shared your story about the, the anniversary, um, 50th anniversary trip. Um, so yes, absolutely. You know, as far as shoes go, if you're doing the dopey challenge, uh, well, if you're doing two races back to back, at least two pairs of shoes. Okay. Um, for the dopey challenge, I know I'm bringing at least three pairs of running shoes, an additional pair of walking shoes, plus two to three pairs of UFOs, recovery sandals, Same. Uh, re recovery sandals and shoes. That's half of a suitcase. <laughs> so it is. And, and to your point, yeah, it's because what happens if it rains? If it's Florida and it's humid, your wet shoes from the 5K, if you were going to use them for the marathon, they still might not be dry. So you want to make sure you have enough shoes to keep you comfortable mm -hmm. for, for the number of races that you have. Um, so yeah, those are, that is our big tip. You know, you mentioned weather, what happens with weather changes. Um, you know, quick story about the 2017 marathon. Uh, they canceled the half marathon the day before because a cold front came through and everybody went to, to Goodwill and, yeah. and the thrift stores in town and bought everything they possibly could in terms of warm layers. You can't go wrong, you know, running, go, go to Goodwill now, go to your thrift store now and pick up a couple of extra warmer layers that you can toss at the side. Yeah after your start. And we'll kind of come back around to that. If not here, then we'll talk about it in midweek moments, but, um, make Order sure hand warmers now get some of that stuff ready to go because they sell out, yeah. you know, what, what, when one blizzard happens, when vacation starts, like get all that stuff ordered right now Yeah, and have yeah. on hand. And, you know, I, I'm literally across the, the highway from, um, from Outdoor World, which is actually the facade that they use for Last Man Standing. So if you ever watch that show, that's that's the that store is across the street from me. So <laughs> I can I can go in there. You know, places like that will have like right now they'll have stocking stuffers for you know yeah. little little gloves and um, hand warmers, all that good stuff. So I'm probably going to run there today when we're done talking about nice. this stuff. Um, so yeah, all of those things to keep you warm. If you have a mylar from previous races, bring it, yep. um, because you just, you just never know. And the thing, the, the freak thing about the 2017 race was that up until a week before it was supposed to be hot, it was yep. supposed to be warm through that whole week. Um, but then it as will occasionally happen in January in Florida, you get this freak kind of front that goes through that cools everything down. I mean, it was 17 yep. to 20 mile an hour winds. It was 34 degrees at the start and it was very cold, very suddenly. So um, just, just plan for, for everything. If you plan for the worst, hope for the best, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, that is, uh, and we did, you know, talking about January weather, we've got that one covered too. Um, <laughs> uh, don't rely on the forecast. <laughs> no, and it's going to change. By the time mm -hmm. this goes up, you're going to start to see the forecast. Right. 
try not to stalk it. Try to just go with the flow because it is it is what it is. And that's why, you know, be prepared for everything, hot weather, cold weather, anything. And you're going to have to make some decisions on site, most likely for whatever happens. And this is why I say pack for everything for this race weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So kind of going back to what, what to pack to, if you use it. Carry on with you. Right. This is something that I would say pack in your carry on. Just wet, cold weather stuff. All no, that I was. We, I thought we were moving on to the next item. I'm actually. I'm kind of jumping, jumping around, around a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because I want to talk about um, if you use it in training, bring it. Yeah. Um, this sort of talk discussing packing. Um, you know, foam rollers, massage guns, stretch tools, yoga mat. Um, you know, all your hydration pack and belt, all of that stuff. Um, make sure that if you've used it in training, bring it with you. You don't want to go through something like the dopey challenge without your foam roller. If you've been using it, it's really, really important to have something like that on hand. Um, when you are hanging out at the resort, because hopefully you will Mm -hmm. be planning in a little bit of downtime. All of that said, nothing new on race day. Um, it's inevitable that you will be doing something new on race day. Yes. If you haven't at least tried on your costume, if you are wearing one or you're doing something a little weird and out there, um, at least ha- put it on once and, yeah. and try to move around a little bit in it just to see how that feels. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the inflatable tauntaun, I put it on and I'm like, okay, this is fun. But then I tried to actually step up onto my treadmill deck and that was a challenge. (laughs) Oh yeah. I put my, my pumpkin on my inflatable pumpkin on and nope, that would not have fit on the treadmill with my treadmill being next to the wall. So yeah, it was what it was and it was for 5k. So But at least try on, make sure that everything is kind of in working order. Um, And I get it. You're you're probably not going to go run a 10K in your 10K costume around your neighborhood. However, at least give it a try and move around in it and make sure that everything is kind of going to work for you. And if it doesn't, make those alterations. So nothing really new on race day, which brings us to the next point that you were going to talk about, Jen, and that is your fuel. Yes. And I would extend that to be your fuel and any really important nutrition you have before or after the race. Bring all of that too. And we talked about previously, I will bring my protein powder and put it in my gear check or leave it in the car or something like that. But put this in your carry-on and I recommend keeping it in the original container in case TSA stops it, has any issues. I personally have not ever been stopped but I know other people have and make sure you have that now for wine and dine it was sports beans on course and they've Mm -hmm. been pretty consistent um and you have a source that has confirmed that that will likely be on course yes as well do you want to talk a little bit about what some sources have said will be on course for us yeah yeah um I we have uh, run Disney connections that have kind of help us out every once in a while. Um, so I received some information about where you can kind of look at the the maps and figure out where the water stops are going to be yep. and where the food stops are going to be. So um, they don't specifically state it in the run Disney event guide. So here's what I know, and this is subject to change based on the whims of Run Disney, basically. I don't know um, what would cause them to change this, but just keep this in mind. So on course, there will be sport sport beans. Um, the marathon is also going to have bananas and chocolate. So here's, here's how this works by race. The 5K is going to have one water stop, water only, at about the mile and a half mark. Right around American Adventure. Right, right in front of American Adventure. The 10K is going to have three water stops with water only. They do not provide Powerade. I can never remember, but I'm pretty sure they do. They never do. 
No, they only ever provide Powerade for the halves and fulls. Right. The half marathon is going to have nine water stops occurring really every mile to a mile and a half, no longer than a mile and a half. So on average, every mile and a quarter or so. Uh, each, uh, each water stop will have water and Powerade. Uh, usually the Powerade, well, I'm not going to say because sometimes the Powerade's in the front, sometimes it's toward the back. Um, so It'll just kind of keep clear and the yeah. volunteers will tell you water power rate. They will tell you what right. it is, what you are taking. And one right. note, just ask them, is this water? Or is this power rate? Yeah. The half marathon will also have one fuel stop at mile seven, seven and a half. And that's going to be sport beans. Okay. And it's on one side or the other of that will be a water stop. I believe it's just prior to it, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Check the guide. <laughs> Check the guide. And if that's the case, you know, it's always grab that water or an extra one to then chase down your fuel with if it's before. So you never yeah. want to take that and then have a dry mouth. You right. want to wash it a little bit. Yeah. It's, that is actually um, one of the things for any sports specific fuel, gels, chews, beans, anything like that taking that on with a lot of water, six to eight ounces of water. And, you know, in the few minutes following the consumption of that fuel, that's going to help it metabolize better and you can take it on board faster. Just a quick aside about that. All right. That's a half marathon. The marathon has 19 water stops, water and power aid. All right. 19 of them. So plenty of opportunities. Never miss a water stop. Okay. Never miss a water stop. Uh, there are five food stops in the following order. All right. This is the information that I've gotten from, from my, my people. Uh, sports beans. That's going to happen just before mile nine. You're going to have bananas at mile 14 and then again at mile 17. You'll have sport beans again at mile 21. That's in the, the Blizzard Beach parking lot. And mile 23 is going to have your chocolate. Um, I volunteered at that stop in 2022 and we had Milky Ways. So the only thing is, uh, like I said, nothing new on race day. If you haven't been practicing this, now is not the time to start, okay? Whatever you have been using in your training, take that with you. Make sure you have enough to get you through. Now, some of you train with the philosophy that you don't have to get to mile 20 or 26. If you haven't hit mile 20 in training, first of all, you're fine, okay? Trust your training. But that may mean you have to bring a little bit more. I wouldn't go with just what you've been taking during training. Bring 25% more just to have it on you just in case, okay? Yep. So if you need to bring an extra, you know, mix a tailwind to throw in your, in your water bottle, do that. Make sure you have it on you, um, just a little bit extra to get you through that marathon. Yeah, I agree 100%. And then again, I go back to make sure you have what you've typically been having after. If you do a protein powder, if you typically have, you know, a honey stinger waffle before or after, you know, have those things on hand for what you do. The other stop that you will often have, especially if it is warm out, is like a sponge stop which they will generally add in as needed. And they've done that in the past. Don't take that sponge, pat yourself down and throw it away. Take that it. sponge and it, you know, hang on to it. Ladies, put it in your sports bra and keep re-wetting it during some of the water stops, for example, to mm -hmm. cool you down. You know, it's, it's a great thing to have. Don't just take it and toss it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was the thing too, uh, kind of looking back at mile 20, you know, 20 ish, 20 ish. It was around mile 19. You'll start seeing those when it starts getting warmer, but, um, they don't actually mark that on the maps No, they don't. because it is a game day decision on what the weather is going to do. If it's warmer, they'll have sponges on course for the marathon, probably only, Probably not yeah. the half, yeah. uh, but definitely for the marathon and they'll have cool towels at the finish. If it's cooler, they'll have mylars at the finish and not cool towels. 
So yeah. what they have at the finish line and on course is going to change depending on what the weather's doing. Um, it was, it kind of hurt my heart. And I don't know if I said anything at the time um, when we were on our way south toward Blizzard Beach during the 2020 marathon, insanely hot day. And I saw dozens and dozens of sponges cast aside. It's yeah. like, please, please, please hang on to them mm -hmm. because I think we, we, we each had three or four and we were oh, giving yeah. them and, away. And cooling towels. Uh, we had cooling towels and I dropped mine at one point. You're like, here, take one of mine and stuff. Right. Um, oh right. yeah. We were, we were giving them away. There was one point, someone was so hot. I poured my sticky noon down her back because she was about to just not do well. But I'm like, you, it, her core temperature needed to go down. So yeah. with those water stops, if it is really hot, pour that water down your back of your neck, front of your chest to core down your cool temperature, if that's the case. When we're recording this, the current forecast is not even out. So we have no idea. No and even idea. if it was, it'd be way too early to be guessing. So right. again, just experience from having done, I've done what, three Disney World marathons now and different temperatures throughout them. So mm -hmm. who knows? Yeah. Yeah. It It's um, it's a little bit different every year. Uh, the last few years, it's been pretty warm, but the first two years I did it, it was insanely cold. And I mean, cold, even for someone who lives in Colorado. So um, just... Keep that in mind. Um, so I think those are all of the tips and best practices. We have a couple of other things, a um, couple of other questions that we might want to hit. Um, we talked about not over planning. I want to kind of go all the way back to the expo and the virtual queue thing. Um, if you're if you're doing the expo on the first day, this is, you have no idea when your number is going to be called. And so you might want to cancel reservations, you know, the dining reservations now, if you, you might not want to do a lightning lane for anything special, um, keep your plans light that day because you don't know what your virtual queue is going to be. Yeah, it's, you, you just don't know. And I know people are, um, people will try and get to a park beforehand after what they want to get in and I get it so it's it's hard this whole system's hard and keep in mind uh run Disney transportation doesn't run between the expo and the parks or Disney Springs they only Correct. run between the resort hotels and the the run disney expo and events okay so Correct. if you are planning on going to a park think that through if you have whatever your window is to get through the virtual queue you know are you in the middle of epcot and you have to somehow get out to espn wide world of sports so keep that in mind just you know there's a lot to think of and unfortunately you're at the whims of the virtual queue system and if you're um, thinking, I'm at Epcot, let me go to one of the boardwalk resorts to then catch a shot, that's more walking. Yeah. That's a lot more time on your feet. Yeah. Um, another question Danielle asks about the expo logistics questions for a first time dopier. Um, the expo page says dopey shirts and bibs will be at State Farm Fieldhouse. Yes. Correct. Do you still need to go to the Visa Athletic Center for gear check bags and shirts for the other races? No, you do not. Okay, so the way this works is for all the races, no matter what you're doing, you pick up your bib. And then once you have your bib, you pick up your gear bag, which is a big plastic drawstring bag that will have all the shirts for you. Okay. If you're doing a challenge, goofy or dopey, all of those shirts will be in one gear bag. If you are doing individual races, say you're doing a 5k, 10k and half, that is not a challenge. You have to pick up your bib three times and then you have it at the state farm field house. Then you have to go over to the visa athletic center and pick up your 5k shirt, then your 10k shirt, then your half marathon shirt. Okay. Yep. So that's, 
if you are doing a challenge, they will be in a bundle. If you are doing multiple individual races, they will not be. So just keep that in mind. And they're usually all rolled up together in this package. Unroll them, check to make sure that they are all the right shirts. I've had people get race shirts from different race weekends in what? their bag. Oh yeah, that happened to Jackie. She got like a random, I think she got like a wine and dine during marathon weekend once. And then <laughs> I've had people get different sizes during in, in their bundles like it, they're like an extra large got thrown in with their mediums of one of them unroll them all check them all try one of them on some people will try them all on if you need to exchange there is a place where you can go to exchange them um yeah. but like i said just double check that you have all the same size and all the right shirts right yeah for sure um a lot of really good questions um i want to bring this one up from sherry oh. Hold on real quickly though, before the gear bag too, um, I'm sorry. Um, they will often have extra gear bags at the actual gear bag tent, like tables where you put your number on day of the race. So they, the they, they're they plastic bags with a drawstring. Sometimes the drawstrings break, the bag breaks here and there, or maybe you decide to do something. They usually have extras. So don't yeah. panic. Right. Um, no, real good point. I, I think that's great. So I think we can cover, we have time to cover one more question before we get into yeah. the closing statements here, breaking down the marathon into manageable chunks. I kind of want to go back to this because, um, marathon's a big deal. Sherry asked this question. So, um, I like to personally break down the marathon by park, Same. because if you look at it from park to park, there are. I think the longest stretch between parks is about five miles and that's from animal kingdom, magic kingdom, excuse me, magic other way around magic kingdom to animal kingdom. Yeah. Um, because even, so you start out at Epcot, right? The first four miles you're in Epcot. Okay. Then that's chunk one, the next five miles or so you're getting to magic kingdom, but along the way you're hitting the ticket and transportation center. Um, so you have some spectators in there next five and a half mile, uh, sorry, then go to, um, magic kingdom. That's another chunk, right? You've got about maybe a mile inside magic kingdom. Nice little break. Then you've got about five miles to animal kingdom. Then you can break that down from there because once you're out of animal kingdom, you're past the halfway mark. Um, and then it starts to get into kind of frankly, dry and boring miles. And this, smaller chunks too. And even. smaller chunks. Now from the backside of Animal Kingdom to what I would consider the next chunk is Blizzard Beach parking lot. You're not in a park again until Hollywood. Yeah. So from mile 17 to mile 23. So find ways to break it up. So I personally like to think, okay, from one mile to the next or from one turn to the next. So this is where looking at that course map and kind of studying it and saying, okay, after mile 17, I go back north and I take another turn south past Coronado Springs. Okay, so what is along that? And I just remember once we left that banana stop at the backside of an, uh, Animal Kingdom, it was a supper fest. And this is where your right. brain on the marathon, it doesn't matter where you are, guys. It could be at Disney, it could be in Boston, it could be anywhere. This is where your brain starts to act up. Um, so that's when you take it one character stop, one mile marker, one turn at a time. Okay, so just start saying, okay, I'm gonna make it to the next, to the next mile marker. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna take a selfie. Okay, next mile marker, and so on. Once you get past Blizzard Beach, and I heard a lot of this last year um, or in 2022 um, that a lot of people were kind of in this blizzard beach purgatory. <laughs> yeah, I heard that was awful. I'm like, thanks. Thanks, folks. Yeah. So I'm okay. Here's the problem that I had. I'm hoping that Run Disney fixes this 
but if not, just be prepared for it. There was no entertainment. There was nothing going on in that parking lot. And it was, it was literally like, you are literally looping through the parking lot. So that's, that's the challenging piece of this. Um, and at mile 20, when you're hitting that wall and you know, the sun is up and it's just really hard. Um, just keep that in mind, have a strategy, have a mental strategy and visualize how you might manage that. Once you're out of the blizzard beach parking lot, your next stop is magic Camp, or excuse me, Hollywood studios. Um, and there's at the top of that hill and you've got to turn, you've got a water stop, you turn, you go up a short hill and there's candy. So, <laughs> and then it, it's Hollywood studios, international squeezeway, Epcot, done. Okay. So that's how you can chunk it up from there. Um, it is kind of a mental game. There is just keep in mind, there's something, what is the next thing I got to get to? Yep. Yep. Right. And, and especially on the second half, just, I don't want to scare anyone, but I also don't want to just gloss over it and say, Oh, don't, don't worry. You got this. Marathons are hard. Bottom yeah. line, marathons are hard. So no matter how fast you finish them, they're hard on that second half. So keep that in mind. Um, so that yeah. I hope Sherry, that helps answer the question. Jen, do you have any kind of yeah? I mean, you break it down the same that? way I do with by park, kind of in between, and then within the parks. I think the way I look at it, look at it as well as there's always something next. Is it a water stop? Is it a mile marker? Is it a character? Is it some sort of form of entertainment, a screen with a movie playing? Is it, you know, what is it out there? And that's where I say, you know, make your own bingo card or something like that of things you want to see on the course. Someone in a different costume, um, a, a, a sign, start, start to think for all these different things. And all of a sudden the miles will go by if you have those pre-planned distractions. Hmm, is it going to be a character stop next or is it going to be this or what is it going to be next? You don't right. have to stop. You know, you, you can just kind of keep go by, do the drive by selfie kind of thing. Um, but know that I think that's a great thing about the Disney World marathons is there's always something next. Right. Whether it be a park, a character, a, you know, mile marker, a water stop different stuff is going to be out there and you never know they always like to do special things for anniversary years as well as yeah. is an anniversary year so you never look know look for something what... at mile 10 look for something at mile 10 of the dope of the marathon which is on main street right in magic kingdom so who knows what they're going to do for that you know i i would bet that's going to be dopey themed and then you may even see something around seven dwarfs mine train as well um yeah. but you know look for the little things pay attention to that because i know that there have been a few marathons that i've done where i don't remember a whole lot of it yeah because i got so caught up in the slog and, and they're really the non-disney ones where you don't remember stuff take in the little pieces because that's going to help you remember it versus mm -hmm. just kind of blanking and, yeah. and going into autopilot yeah and agreed i i think um, probably one of the, the most memorable marathons was starting at mile 20 of the 2020 marathon. Mm -hmm. Um, it is, and not always for pleasant reasons, but, <laughs> but just keep that, all of that in mind. Look, we have a lot of great questions from our podcast, Facebook group that we are going to cover in midweek moments. Some, some more specific stuff we didn't get to talk about um, spectators today, cause there were some notice things that people noticed about spectators. I wanted to kind of spend a little time on the midweek moments talking about that as it stands, it took an hour and a half to record this. It's going to take two hours to edit the podcast and another four hours to edit the video part of this. So I think okay. we can do some final thoughts here. Um, do you have any final thoughts about what we discussed today? I, I think remember to have fun. That's what this is all about. At the end of the day, we, we do this to challenge ourselves to stay healthy, to have fun and do something different. We're lucky to be able to do this. 
it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. That's why we do it though. That yep. is what, what brings us back is it's hard, but it's fun at the same time. So um, go in there. Don't try not to overthink it too much because yeah. I'm guilty of that as well. Oh, oh yeah. hundred um, percent. And just have fun. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And, you know, be realistic just because it's at Disney doesn't mean a marathon is any easier. All right. Yeah. It's, you know, the location makes it more pleasant, more palatable, but it is still an athletic event. And if you're taking care of your athletic piece first, then the rest of it is going to be more fun. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of to wrap it up a little bit, here's what's coming on the podcast and yeah. the YouTube channel. So I'm actually not going to wait until Friday. If this thing is done early, I'm going to release it. It's going to go up. Okay. Sure. Um, but it's all, it's going to go up on the podcast feed and on the YouTube channel simultaneously. So if you're listening to this and you want the YouTube channel side of it, check out the show notes. It's going to be in there. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for sticking around for an hour and a half. Um, and if you want to just have this on your, you know, if you want to listen to it again on a, your last long run or whatever, right, we'll no run. right. We'll, we'll leave a link in, uh, in the description for that as well. So here's what's happening. We've got a midweek moments coming up on the 28th. Jen and I will be back next week for kind of our year in review wrap up. We've already recorded that we've already recorded our 2023 goal setting podcast. So you guys still have stuff to listen to through um, all, all the way up to the Dobie Challenge Marathon weekend. All right. Uh, however, I think we're going to have to take a break from midweek moments in January, just because we're going to have a lot of recaps and stuff to do. Uh, I need a little bit of a break <laughs> for all of this. Uh, the YouTube channel, um, kind of same deal. I've got a couple of things that are already scheduled, ready to go, but I am going to take a break from new content with the exception of uh, the recaps. I'm going to work on those as soon as I'm back from Marathon Weekend. I'm going to take a break from the channel. I'm going to take some time off over the holidays. Um, so the lighter schedule for the YouTube channel through January, at least maybe even beyond. Um, one last thing, you guys, this is Marathon Weekend. We absolutely love to see you guys. So if you see us in the corrals, on the courses, you know, at the start lines in the parks, please come say hello because um, it is, I, I don't get to see people face to face uh, doing what I do. And it, a lot of times it's just me sitting here at this microphone, um, hoping that someone is out there listening. And when you guys come up to me specifically and say, yes, I am listening, um, it really fills my well. And so very selfishly, please come say hello. I'm saying that I really, I need you to, okay? So, um, and certainly Jen, I'm speaking for you as well, but I'm guessing you feel as Yeah, well. absolutely. Say hi. You know, I am more of just that voice. So whenever someone recognizes me, says hi, it's always like, oh, oh, I didn't know anyone was listening. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I know, I know that because of the comments I get here and there, but no, I, I do greatly appreciate it. Thank you all. Yeah. And we want to thank you guys for kind of going with the flow on this new, um, this new way of doing things. Like I said, um, these breakdowns take a long time and after doing five, six years worth of them and they start looking all the same. And I, I'm literally recycling the script, you guys, there was no reason for me to do a new one. Um, so I, I'm the support you guys show, over in the, in the groups and on the page and, and all of that, where you said, Nope, I get it. Totally fine. We can do our own homework. Thank you. Thank you for that. Because it really took a lot off of my plate during a very, very busy time. Um, as it stands, I still haven't started my costumes and I leave in a week. So <laughs> I haven't started mine either. Like, I, I don't know how this is going to go. So, uh, no, we really want to thank everyone for all of the great questions. Like I said, we'll be back on, uh, for midweek moments. We, we still have more to talk about with this. Um, but in the meantime, thank you so much for listening to the runners without limits podcast. I want to thank all of our patrons, by the way, here they are 
wham, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, that then there, here it is. Big splash page of all of our patrons. You guys are so amazing. Thank you so much for such a wonderful year of uh, your patronage. Um, you can join us over there. We have three different levels. We've got lots of extra content coming to you. So thank you guys so much for that kind of support. Our Facebook group is where we get a lot of these questions. You can um, continue the conversation about this. If something came up in this conversation that you still want to know about, throw those questions out there. If you want to, if you can think of some other future pod podcast topic, throw that in there as well. The Runners Without Lim Limits website has all kinds of extra content. You can support this podcast by joining us again on Patreon or by leaving a review wherever you find your podcasts. So until next time, remember, you have no limits. Come say hello. Merry Christmas, season's greetings, happy holidays, and happy running. Happy running, everyone.